Good morning, everyone. I am your Monday host, Catherine Farrell, and we're coming to you live from the Durfner Judaica Museum here at the Hebrew Home. And this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. So today is Monday, February 8th, and the time is 10.30 a.m. We have a great show planned for you today. So let's jump right into it with the weather. Uh, some clouds in the morning will give way to mainly sunny skies in the afternoon, high around 30, winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So let's move into this day in history. Uh, for February 8th in 1926, Disney Brothers Cartoon Studios became known as Walt Disney Studios. Uh, in 1965, the Supremes release Stop in the Name of Love. And in 1991, Roger Clemens signs record $5,380,250 per year for the Red Sox contract. Um, and so a little bit later in history, I recall, so surprise everyone, at one point in my life, I really was a sports fan and I actually paid attention to baseball. I was a Yankees fan. I guess I still am a Yankees fan. Um, and I remember going to see one of the Subway series, right? The Mets versus the Yankees in the summer. It was July of 2000. And I saw the uh, Roger Clemens, who was the pitcher, hit Mike Piazza, who was the Mets catcher, in the head. And so what I didn't know at the time, but I know now, was part of a long series of um, tiffs that they had that ended up while they were in the actual World Series later on in the year with uh, Roger Clemens, I guess Mike Piazza swang and uh, the bat broke and part of it ran, um, flew into Roger Clemens sort of angle and he grabbed it and then threw it back at Mike Piazza. It was just totally <laughs> bananas. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to let everyone know that at one time I was actually a sports fan. And I do recall that as uh, something you can never forget. Anyway, uh, our national day today is National Boy Scouts Day, National Kite Flying Day, although it's Here are pretty. The scores for the Mets between July 7th, 2000 <laughs> and July 9th, 2000, the Subway Series. Okay, Siri's talking to me, sorry. Um, it's National Kite Flying Day, which means you can't really fly a kite here in our area because it's quite cold, as we just realized. But if you're somewhere out west or down south, go ahead, fly your kite. Um, it's National Iowa Day. It's National Football Hangover Day. And it's National Clean Out Your Computer Day. Um, so happy National Days to everybody. On to the birthdays. For our residents, it's Miriam R. Happy birthday, Miriam. And we actually have multiple notable celebrities celebrating birthdays today. So first is composer John Williams turns 88. Uh, I didn't know who this was, but fun fact, while best known for his Star Wars scores, which I do know that, has also written music for big movie franchises like Superman, Harry Potter, and Jurassic Park. So happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday to newscaster Ted Koppel. He turns 80. Nick Nolte turns 79. Uh, fun fact on Nick, he recently voiced the character Wheel on The Mandalorian, which I have not seen, uh, and actor Creed Breton turned 77, or Bratton. Uh, he was from The Office, which the American version of The Office, and actress uh, Mary Steenbergen turned 67, rocker Vince Neal turns 59 uh, from Motley Crue, actress Mary McCormick turns 51, and Seth Green turns 46. Uh, author John Grisham is 65. So happy birthday to everyone celebrating a birthday here at the Hebrew Home, our notable celebrities, and also anyone out there in YouTube land who may be celebrating. Our horoscope for today, February 8th, uh, Aquarians can have a hard time expressing how they feel today. If emotions come rushing in, your first reaction might not be what you'd like it to be, but there are ways to recover that Aquarian cool. You can call on a friend to vent or sing at the top of your lungs when you get a chance to be alone today. 
By using healthy ways to let it out, you can relieve some stress and renew your vibe. Today's soul advice, the world is ever changing and always mysterious. That means someone or something will come along to challenge your beliefs all throughout your life. Keep an open mind and be enthusiastic about learning because while changing the way you view the world around you can be scary, it can also help open you up to new experiences and relationships you may not have expected. All right, my friends. So moving on to our food, favorite topic by far. Lunch for today is the sloppy joe on a bun with mixed vegetables and for dessert, peaches. Dinner for tonight, uh, it's a butternut squash soup with macaroni and cheese and peas and carrots, and then for dessert, shortbread cookies, shortbread cookies. Um, on to our sports segment. So guys, it's the day after the Super Bowl. Did any of you not watch the Super Bowl yesterday? I think I watched it. You didn't watch it, Antonique? I know you watched some of it. I probably watched like five minutes of it, to be honest. Um, you know, I just, I, I never, every year at the Super Bowl, like people tell me, oh, you have to, like, this is what a first means. This is what the downs mean. <laughs> but I only watch it on the Super Bowl and I get it and then I forget it. So I did not watch very much of it. But as we all know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they won. And so I wanted to focus on, uh, uh, this actually story comes from ESPN and it's titled Tampa Bay Buccaneers Assistants, Lori Locust and Morel Java Defar, first female coaches to win Super Bowl. With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 31 to nine, which I'm told is a really uh, high number for a football game, that victory over Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday night, Lori Locust and Morel Java Defar become the first female assistant coaches to win a Super Bowl. This week, they became the first pair of female coaches on a te team to coach the Super Bowl while referee Sarah Thomas became the first official to work a Super Bowl. Last year, Katie Sowers became the first female coach to coach in the Super Bowl, and when the San Francisco 49ers lost to the Chiefs 31 to 20. It was time to knock those doors down, said Bucks coach Bruce Arians, who made a conscious decision to seek qualified women for roles in his staff. Morale Javity Farr, above, and Lori Locust on Sunday became the first female assistant coaches to win a Super Bowl. Locust, who took up semi-professional football at age 40 and most recently coached at, at, in the AAF and was an intern with the Baltimore Ravens under renowned defensive line coach Joe Cullen, was hired last offseason as the Bucks' assistant defensive line coach. Javity Farr, a former college basketball player at Pace University. And a little sidebar here, my sister-in-law mentioned her last night because my sister-in-law works at Pace. Uh, she's in the admissions department and she knew this, um, this woman. She was really super psyched for her. So she has a doctorate in physical therapy and was hired as the Bucks assistant strength and conditioning coach and slash physical therapist. Arians has also been a champion of racial diversity. All three coordinators, Offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich, defensive coordinator Ton Bowles, and special teams coordinator Keith Armstrong, along with run game coordinator, assistant head coach Harold Goodwin, are black. So congratulations to the winners last night, to all of these uh, powerful female roles and, and these women in these mostly male-dominated roles and um, for the racial diversity of the team. Congratulations on your super win. So guys, that's our sports news for today. Um, we do have a positive news story. Uh, it comes from Good News Network. It's the 10 positive COVID updates from around the world, which I think is a good, is a good, um, good one for today. 2021 is looking brighter. So number one, coronavirus numbers are finally dropping in the US. January 26th marked two weeks of a substantial decline in COVID-19 hospitalizations in the U.S. And not only hospitalizations, but the seven-day average of coronavirus cases has dropped significantly too, cut by one-third since January 12th peak, according to the COVID tracking project maintained by The Atlantic. Falling hospitalizations are occurring across 36 states with numbers holding steady 
in 12 or more states. California, for instance, reported a 20% decrease in hospitalizations over three weeks. Uh, number two, medical schools are being inundated with applications from those who want to join the field, which I think is really awesome. The number of students applying to medical school for the upcoming 2021 academic year is up by 18%. It's a huge spike compared to the previous year and is also a record considering that the Association of American Medical Colleges usually sees an increase about 1 to 3 uh, percent over each year. The surge is being compared to the flood of military enlistments that followed the 9-11 attacks when Americans became inspired to serve. Pretty cool. Number three, drug companies say they won't want, uh, they don't want to make a profit on the vaccines. Both Oxford, AstraZeneca, and Johnson & Johnson have decided that until the pandemic ends, they'll sell their COVID-19 vaccines using a not-for-profit model. According to the Financial Times, Oxford AstraZeneca is currently priced at about $3 to $4 per dose, which just covers the costs. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine, which is still to be authorized, will be priced at around 10, but it only needs one dose in order to be effective. Number four, India and New Zealand are buying vaccines for neighboring countries who can't afford them. It's inspiring to see countries pledging to deliver vaccines to neighboring nations who might otherwise have trouble getting doses for their populations. As part of its vaccine diplomacy campaign, India plans to offer 20 million vaccines to Nepal Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, the Maldives, uh, and more, more, Mauritius, with many of these aid shipments being completely free. Meanwhile, the New Zealand government has earmarked 53 million to make sure its Pacific Island neighbors have access to safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines, which they may not otherwise be able to afford. And number five, this is pretty cool. Chick-fil-A manager fixes traffic backup at drive through vaccine clinic. After the computer system handling registrations went down during a South Carolina drive through coronavirus vaccine clinic and backup of cars left people waiting for hours. So in the midst of the chaos, the town mayor decided to contact the local manager of a Chick-fil-A uh, tweeting, when you need help, call the pros. After he looked over the situation, he knew right away what to do. There's your problem right there, he told Mount Pleasant Mayor Will Haney. It's backed up because you have one person checking people in. Then Chick-fil-A manager Jerry Walkowiak showed them how to do it. With the help of a few Rotary Club volunteers, they slashed the one hour wait time to just 15 minutes, transforming the messy traffic jam into a smooth operation that vaccinated 1,000 people that day. Number six. The Moderna vaccine can vanquish viral variants too. The Massachusetts-based biotech company Moderna has tested their vaccine against two new rapidly spreading strains of COVID-19. According to Nature, it appears that the vaccine works as effectively against the UK variant as it does against the original form. While the vaccine appears less effective at neutralizing the South African 501Y.V2 variant, it still provides protection. Moderna is now planning to test a booster jab that will enhance immunity against emerging forms of the coronavirus. Number seven, an all-female team delivers COVID-19 vaccines by snowmobile in harsh rural Alaskan conditions. People living in the remotest parts of Alaska are receiving the COVID-19 vaccines uh, early so they can continue to get visits from family members, all thanks to a determined group, um, working group of women. The team of four is using planes, snowmobiles, and dog sleds, whatever it takes, to deliver the vaccine across rural and northern Alaska. Consisting of a pharmacist, a doctor, and two nurses, the Adventurous Medical Team has delivered 65 vaccinations so far, traveling hundreds of miles to villages to get the job done. Number eight, after recovery from COVID-19, immune cells remember for at least half a year. Good news for those who have already contracted COVID-19, the immune system appears to remember how to make antibodies that can fight off the virus for at least six months following the initial infection, and likely for much longer than that. 
a study led by scientists at Rockefeller University and published in uh, Nature found that perhaps due to the exposure of remnants of the virus hidden in the gut, participants continued to improve their antibodies months after contracting the, the coronavirus. Number nine, group is giving away free bags of marijuana to people who get vaccinated. Dubbed as Joints for Jabs, a community effort has been planned for Washington, D.C. for whenever public vaccination sites open. D.C. Marijuana Justice will celebrate the momentous occasion by thanking people for getting vaccinated with dozens of D.C. home growers lawfully distributing free bags of cannabis outside vaccination centers as soon as the general public is able to get vaccinated. That's pretty crazy. Uh, we are looking for ways to safely celebrate the end of the pandemic, and we know nothing brings people together like cannabis. Okay, says DCMJ co-founder Nicholas Schiller. And number 10, <laughs> people are using their free time to pick up books and read again, which we know that's true here too at the Hebrew home. Um, if you see us coming around, we have our large print book carts and we can get you other books. Now we have access again to the Biederman Library, which is super exciting. Uh, so with more downtime than usual, it seems that many people have turned back to books. In the UK last year, for the first time since 2012, more than 200 million books were sold. Borrowing books also grew exponentially in the US. Uh, National Ge Geographic reported that weekly e-book lending increased across the nation by nearly 50% in the months following March 2020. A survey in Canada showed similarly positive uh, reading trends with 58% of respondents in a survey from the nonprofit BookNet saying they planned on reading more because of lockdowns. So guys, that's our show for today. Uh, remember to tune in to Channel 8. Uh, we have What's the Story with Kate coming up next at 11.15. Then we have Exercise with Deborah at 1.30. And today is a resident council day, so that's at 2.30. Um, don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home tonight on Channel 88 or on YouTube. So in honor of Black History Month, I will end the show today with a quote by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Join us tomorrow morning, guys, for another great show, same time, same place. Once again, I'm your Monday host, Katherine Farrell, and this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Have a great day.